Ahem. While well, we're busy reminding you that choosing to listen to a riff is your choice and your choice alone, I would also like to remind our legend bringer to get his fat pony butt back into the studio and stop playing with his gun paw! But, Trixie, do you realize how hard it is to make one of these things with hooves? And I'm not even a unicorn! I gotta use these wingtips and hope and pray it works! But, anyway, now that that disclaimer's out of the way, let's begin. Oh, by the way, guys, here's where the secret comes in about Mike and writing this fic. I hope you're ready, because it's going to blow your freaking mind with stupidity. Chapter 6 Lake and Jupiter step through the front the entranceway, and just like the Temple of Time, there was background music playing everywhere. And Jupiter could almost swear she saw six white letters flash before her eyes. Fours Temple. Wow. I didn't think we were going to get video game desi design as well. I mean, I'd be used to seeing cartoon design on the show part, but I didn't think we were going to get video game design. Well, that's all that Jupiter could say as he gazed around the entrance hall. Master, this is amazing. But when she turned around, Link was gone. Master? Master? Of the puppets and the pulling of strings! She called. Slowly, she heard a thump coming from a tree on the right side of the room. So he looked up and saw Link and climbed the vines along the wall. It was at the top of the tree. Master, what are you doing up there? Trust me, Link called down. Just worry about the monsters. Jupiter looked around. What monsters? But got her answers when two waffles popped up right out from the ground. What? Wow, thanks a lot, a-hole! Jupiter looked out of the way before the wolfers got her with furry swipes. Oh, I'm sorry, I read this wrong. With furry swipes. Well... They are wolves. Then, with a swift couple of kicks, he sent those suckers packing. And I got more of that where it came from, she so growled at the floor. She so stood up tall and turned around and he had to see Link. Whoa! You scared me, she so cried. Sorry, said Link. Come on, let's go. So, uh, why didn't you help me out back there? Because I'm an asshole in this story. Didn't you figure that out? He led her to a wooden door at the end of the room, which led her to a small corridor with another door on the other side. Once they entered, it emerged into the main hallway of the forest temple. Welcome, Sailor Jupiter, to the world of tomorrow! Jupiter looked around the room. At least five doors were seen at the opposite ends of the room. A strange eye above an alcove waved to the right of the room, and a stone ring in the center of the room with four torches at all four corners. Each one burnt a different colored flame. Red, blue, green, and purple. And all four of them seemed to encircle an oddly looking stone in the center. Jupiter was most amazed. And I thought fire was usually red orange. Hey, have you ever seen what happens when you burn copper? She so had to go up and see, or see if they were real. But as soon as he got close to the stairs, the four flames disappeared off the torches, like a kind of magic. Huh? Hey, what was that? Link stood tall, tense, with his hand ready to draw his sword as four ghosts, each the same colors of the flames he now carried. Going somewhere? Called the purple one. Jupiter backed away slowly. Who or what are you? She asked. The four ghosts, he flew around in a type of dance pose. These ones sound their knees. Joel, sound the red one. Beth, sound the blue. Amy, sound the other blue. Meg, sound the blue. Wow. Did the fake just go colorblind, or did forget that there were supposed to be four different colors? They then all sat together, shouted at the same time. Sisters, sisters, we are the four Poe sisters. Ho 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 ho. Uh, ellipses. Okay, said Jupiter. <laughs> ellipses. I wouldn't say everything is okay, snickered Beth. All four of them held out their torsos with colored blades. We got the flames now. You'll never get them back, said Amy. It's all color over, kids, snapped Joel. Your f journey is over. One by one, the sisters fled in different corners of the room and vanished through the walls. The room became darker, and Jupiter watched in shock as the stone of Sarah went under the floor, was told her it was actually an elevator. 
to listen to them, Jupiter. So, like, we'll just have to track them down and get the flames back somehow. Ellipses. Um, you guys starting to get it yet? Have you figured out what's going on? If not, I'll tell you at the end of the chapter. Jupiter remembered how when it told her that every one of the temples had puzzles and complexes to solve. And if you're Game Grumps, you fail at them! And that's two! So, if we get back to Flames, maybe that elevator will pop up back again? She so asked, exactly right, said so Link. But first of all, we gotta actually find those Pose Sisters, destroy them, and get back to Flames. He led her out to the door at the back of the stairs. They walked through it and emerged in another tunnel way that was being blocked by a huge swinging skull surrounded by blue flames. A blue bubble, it was called. You actually took time to remember these things? The bubble slowly hovered towards the duo, but Link raised his healing shield. The skull hit the heel and his flame was doused. The skull hopped along the ground in a pack until Jupiter just crossed over her foot. That was easy. They came to another door when Link told Jupiter it was kind of an automatic door that only opened when he stood in front of it and shouted, Open! Ellipses. Um... Guys, when Mike and plays Legend of Zelda and he gets to those temples, do you think he actually goes and yells open every time he goes to one of the doors? I'm just saying, I would hate to see a Mike and Let's Play. They came to a closed area, and when the door closed behind him, it also got sealed with iron bars. What do we do now? asked Jupiter. You die, Ellipses. That's what? Called an ugly voice. The duo watched as two giant skull warriors called Stoffels popped up and began attacking them. You take him. What's him? Him, him? Him, them? Them, them? Ellipses. I'll take the other. Said Link as they dashed off at the bow. Stoffels won. Slash for Jupiter. She dodged it. They tried to find whip. Forest, fight whip, lash! But Stuffles one just cut her vines off with a sword. Well, that didn't work. Link waited until Stuffles two left to him, which gave him a chance to evade and attack the beast from behind. Link told Jupiter that the Stuffles had to either be hit from behind or during their attacks. Your vines could also be used as a normal whip. Use that. You know, you could apply electricity to that whip, or you, you know what? No. Obviously, this is a guy who's only played red and green. I mean, are you sure we can't use Bullet Seed? Jupiter followed her master's words. Before long, the duo had successfully managed to beat the two monsters and vaporize them. Once they were gone, not only did the boards lift up, but a small treasure chest had appeared before the duo. Hey, what's this for? asked Jupiter. Link opened the chest to reveal a small key. Dun 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 dun! Was the massive identical one he had picked up from a chest on the tree in the entrance hall. It became clear to Jupiter that there were going to be some doors locked and chained in the temple, and that these keys were what opened them. Link was impressed at how quick she was catching on. I'm just impressed at how fast this guy's actually go getting through this let's play. Jupiter promised to trust Link for the rest of the way as they backtracked to the main hall and into the alcove on the left side of the room, where a big blue stone was blocking something. Jupiter noticed this design on the block was the exact same symbol on the floor of time. So Link played the Song of Time as Orcarana, which made the block vanish. Don't mess with the Orcarana time, he said with a smirk. Is that why there are no mods for that? I. Wait a second. What? Let's make sure that joke was accurate. Okay. Okay, so with a little assistance from my brother, I had discovered that there are no, f in fact, ROM hacks, uh, mods of Legend of Zelda Orca of Time. There are plenty of ROM hacks, but no mods. They get there through the door and emerge in a grassy chamber. Ah, Fessalaya Glass. They battled their way through the monster plants and made their way to a fine wall, crawling with Skawaltius. Leave them to me, said Jupiter. Forest Razor Leaf Blow! Ellipses. And she knocked all the spires off the wall. Nothing to it, she smirked. They had to climb out to the high ledge and enter the next room. And all there was was nothing more than another blue bubble. 
Link shielded, and Jupiter crushed. That was boring. I don't know. These temples can be quite fun when you start working on them. The bars on the two doors are gone, and much larger treasure chests appeared. Link let Jupiter open at this time. <laughs> Item get, and inside was a map. An official map of the entire forest temple. It shows us all the floors and rooms in the temple, and our positions, said Link. He pointed to the part of the map that was flashing green. The green flashing rooms are our current position, and the blue ones are the places we've been in already. So, in terms of real life, how does that work? Does it just magically fill in, or does it, in the words of a, a certain internet reviewer, it's magic, we don't have to explain it. Oh, pretty neat, said Jupiter. She so folded out the map and kept it uh, tight in her suit. Woo! This could come in handy. Z exited into the next area and Link defeated the plan on the balcony. Stay here, ellipses, said Link as he stood on the ledge. I'm going to try to get to the other balcony. But, Master, ellipses, how can you do that? asked Jupiter. It's too far to jump. Link gestured her to look up at the hookshot target above the balcony. He shot his way over safely. They got her to fight with herself over as well. Gee, that wasn't so tough. She said, da 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 dum ba 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 da ba ba da 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 Link then began telling her about the odd looking switch on the floor, and how she should watch out for him. See that well over on the far corner? He asked. She put her case over the balcony and saw it. Link stepped on the switch and actually began to lower the water in the well. She pretty much thought that was wicked. Okay. Let's see. Let's jump down here, said Link as he hopped onto the ledge. Whoa, whoa, ellipses, wait, 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 said, cried Jupiter, jump, ellipses, all the way down there? You crazy? Link shook his head, just watch. He looked for the ledge. Master! Jupiter watched him fall, but as he hit the ground, Link tucked in his head and rolled to the safety of the ground without getting hurt for the fall. Jupiter he just used to find one to slide down to the ground. How did you do that? She asked. No one could have survived a fall like that. Lake told her it was a special trick he learned as a boy. Ooh. If you jump from a high place and roll forward when you land, ooh, you'll soften your landing. It won't get hurt from the fall. However, it isn't always guaranteed to work, though. Either the ground was not smooth enough, or the cliff was really, really high. Master, you astound me. They climbed down the now drained well and along the path and found another chest at the end with a key. Do 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 do! They got climbed up the fence and went back up to another hall in the first garden area and headed for the door back to the main hall. Okay, Jupiter, ellipses, where to from here? Jupiter got out the map and observed the flashing spot on the main hall. According to this, the only route we could take now is ellipses. Jupiter got out the map and observed the flashing spot that was the main hall. According to this, the only route we could take now is, ellipses, the locked door in the west ledge. So they went up and opened the locked door. Link also had to warn Jupiter to be careful about which door she unlocked. Because if you unlock the door, it will stay open for good, but the key will vanish. Gee, sure do have to coordinate things carefully in this temple. They crossed through the narrow hallway, killed the Skultia, went through the other door into the next chamber, which was composed of main ledges, but only had one ladder. Oh, <laughs> pish posh. I wouldn't worry too much about the whole keys thing. You'll be able to get to all the doors, no problem. Well, let's see. Looks like we don't have any choice but to go straight up. Said, so, like, you go to your first, Jupiter. Yes, Master. Has anybody else but noticed me but Link that Link has been so far pushing Zelda, pushing Jupiter first in a lot of these things and usually getting her into trouble? I keep telling you he's an ass. They climb up the ladder, then up another one, and another, and another, and another, and another. Jupiter looked around the tunnels and alcoves, but could find no other way to the next ledge. Great. Now how are we supposed to get up there? She so asked. So he checked the map, but found no clue or anything to help him out on this one. Link, however, was staring curiously at the arrows painted on the floor. They seemed to be leading to a small pit near the edge uh, they needed to access. Key to solving this puzzle. 
As he followed the arrows in reverse, bumped into something big and hard. He looked up and saw a huge stone block. It's far too big to just leap and grab onto that like that, but maybe. Jupiter, come here, ellipses. He called. When Jupiter got there, Lake told her about the arrows on the floor, and how the big block may be the key to solving the puzzle. Do you really think it's going to work? She asked. Well, only one way to find out, said Lake. He grabbed a hold of the rough sides of the block and being pointing it towards him. Well, don't just stand there, give me a hand. Jupiter helped him pull the huge block to the point where Lake said stop. Okay, ellipses. Good. He panted. Now, ellipses, let's get over there and push it upwards. Harder, harder. Jupiter sighed heavily but obeyed. He pushed it up until it hit the wall and then circled around to it by the tunnel and pushed along it until it dropped down to a small pit. Now they can hop up to it and go to the next ledge. You go up there and wait for me. I'll be right back. Said Link. What, master? Said Jupiter. Link backtracked to the alcove where the block was before he moved it. Then climbed up the upper ladder. When he got to the top and found another block at the tunnel, he pushed it all the way ahead until it hit the wall. Jupiter, can you hear me? He called. Do you see the block? Yes, Ellipses. I see it. He called back. Link told her to push it forward, just enough for it to squeeze through. And once he got through, they both worked together and pushed the rest of it away until it fell into place. I think, Ellipses, I need to work out more. Called out Jupiter. They climbed the top of the block in the next couple of ledges. And you'll find the end up on another ladder. At the top, they came across the two blue bubbles, which they decided to ignore, and went through the locked door. Jupiter took one look at the corridor he was standing in and realized it was all twisted like licorice. Twisted like liquor. What? Whoever built this temple must have had a strong stomach, he said. A really strong stomach. Before they headed through the corridor door, just, just a moment, Jupiter, said, like, I want to use your Fieri's wind right here on this spot, ellipses. Jupiter was confused. He told me no it's nothing but warping spells, he said. So why is he using it here? Link gave the you'll know soon enough looks. So Jupiter saw no point to get on with it. I call the power of Fiori's wind, she cried. Create a warp point. She was bathed in a tube of swirling green light as a small glowing green long light appeared over their head. There was nothing they could do with it now, so they just headed up the corridor. The room at the end does also, although seemed to be a little puzzling too. There was a locked door on the right side. But there was also an oriented blue and gold chest hanging sideways of the hall. Link told her not to mind it because they couldn't reach it yet. Who says? Why can't she mind it? I mean, she could just use it. So they decided to. Okay, it's your playthrough. Head through the locked door instead. Also used their last key. As he went down the stairs to the next room, they noticed their painting on oh, Solo, one of the four post sisters. Juber stepped right up to the pain. I swear if I'll get her hands on her, I'll. But as soon as he got close to a few feet with the painting's view, the picture disappeared. It just went all black. Did you see that? I saw it, said Link. I think I expected it. He told Jupiter about the Poe sisters. He faced them once before, and what they had to do was destroy all three paintings in the room, but only attack the one that Jalil was in. Wait, Ellipses, you mean to tell me the ghost is hiding and jumping around these paintings? She asked. Link died. If you get too close to the portraits, Joel will see us and flee to one of the others. Our only option is to attack her from a distance. But I'm forced that there's only one weapon I know will do the job. Link told Jupiter about the fairy bow, and that was the hidden treasure of the forest temple. Jupiter and Link would be allowed to use it, but only until they found it. So they saw they no choice but to go down the steps to the next room. I mean, she's got razor leaf. We don't have to follow this. Okay, once again. As soon as they steeped through the tower, it was closed and sealed with bars, and three stealthles had appeared. Some guys just never learn, snapped Link. Jupiter went down finds. Let's take space. Um down. They danced in the bow. It may have been two against three, but it made no difference, not this time. Jupiter and Link defeated the first two in a snap. The third was on the left. And to his left, there was Link. To his right, there was Jupiter. Uh oh. Bash. They kept him hard in the face of both sides, and while it was burst his head like a balloon, the rest of him vaporized. Oh, ellipses, that had to hurt. My Jupiter. The parts of the two doors were lifted, and large circles appeared in the center of this room. Go ahead, Jupiter. Ellipses, open it. Said Link, knowing full well what was in it. Jupiter jumped up to the chest and it opened up. Once the lid was open, a golden light shone up in, towards the ceiling. Inside the light was a bow, a quiver full of arrows. Dun 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 dun! dun. Master, ellipses, 
Is this what I think it is? She asked. That it is, all right. They covered the ferry boat, one of the five weapons Link had lost. He did use the power of his Triforce Curse to copy it in the quiver. One for him, and one for Jupiter. Copycat! What? Wait a minute. The Triforce of Curse can't do that! You're cheating! Do you got a game shark going on here? This is pretty neat, she says. She strapped the quiver to her back. Not only do I look like an Amazon warrior, I feel like one too. Obviously, she was going to like her new weapon. Now that they had their bows, it was time to begin their ghost hunt for the Post Sisters. Getting back to the four flames for the torches. Have you guys figured out the secret yet? Here it is. For all the temple stories. For each one. And I think even for the final battle. This is a strategy guide. Mike is using the actual Legend of Zelda Arcarana Time strategy guide. To write this. You might have noticed I said ignore this or you'll soon come to stuff like that during the read. That's from the strategy guide. I don't know which one he's using. It might be Prima or something. Now, it's not a bad thing to use the strategy guide. I know I used it when I played Legend of Zelda or Garana Time. Heck, mine was the Game Pro one. Yeah. They went really bad on that Game Pro one. They had it through two issues. The first issue was all of Link's journey as a kid. Then they had the second volume. You had to get the second issue in order to get the ones that had Link's adventures as an adult. It was a really cheap, expensive, and dumb idea, and I fell for it. I actually bought both issues. Because as a kid, I loved reading Game Pro. Actually, I just loved reading game mags in general. I couldn't find Nintendo Power in my hometown, but Game Pro, EGM, and Game Players, though, that was my jam! But yeah, my kids copy this word for word. Every, this is why these characters are not acting the right way. Again, no problem with using a strategy guide to beat Legend of Zelda, but I think you guys are about to see somebody's this poorly done Let's Play. With no visuals. But hey. Could be worse. You could be watching Game Crumbs play Let's Go Zelda Ark around the time. And the three. Oh and there's some moral today about trusting people or something. But the. <sighs> okay I like this song. I'll give you love. Keep you close to me. No one in the world will ever hurt you. I swear that nothing will tear us apart. When trouble comes, I won't desert you. I'll be your hero. I'll be your Robin Hood. I'll be your Lancelot. The way I said I would. I'll be your hero. I'll be your Ivanhoe. Love is my sword, so have no fear. Oh, I'll be your hero. Yes, I'll be your hero. You know, the sad part about this song is that it actually fits for a Link and Zelda's relationship. Although, why are the other members of the Senshi here? I'll never know. I'll give you hope. Keep you safe and free. When you need a song, I'll be there to play it. Let someone rob you, and I'll take the blow. When the dragon comes, I'll go and slay it. I'll be your hero. I'll be your Robin Hood. I'll be your Lancelot, the way I said I would. I'll be your hero. I'll be your Ivanhoe. Love is my sword, so have no fear. Oh, I'll be your hero. Ah. Uh, I don't like the movie that this comes from, David Copperfield, but I love the song. There's just one teeny tiny little bitty problem with this. The song sounds romantic, right? Like a 
guy telling his girlfriend he'll always be there and will protect her and keep her safe. It, it sounds really like a romantic, also Diddy, right? In the movie, David is singing this song to his mother. This is, in fact, a very Oniapil song. Good night with that.